What up, everybody? This is your boy Theo Pence here. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube so you don't miss any Run Your Race content. What up, everybody? This is your boy Theo Pence here with another episode of Run Your Race with my boy, AJ Richardson, who is not here again. Another fine, my boy. Another fine. But people, we got a very special guest here today. Very special guest. Training guru. I mean, does it at a high level. I've been busting his ass all summer. He he can't hold me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, uh. He think he got the best handles, but he don't. Other than the first time I worked out with him, I thought I couldn't handle the ball to save my life. But but people. We have a very special guest here today. He is a dear friend now. Can call him about anything. Real down to earth dude. We got Tyler Ralph. It was good, T. Appreciate doing? you having me, nah, guy. I appreciate you coming on, you know brother. What I'm I appreciate you coming on. Listen, this is a we've had um dribble too much on here, uh, but we didn't have him live. You're our first live training uh basketball. Person we've had, so be honored. Well, I appreciate you, man. You are, you are. I mean, dang, anytime you know, nah, just like, I'm able to be in your presence, nah, nah, man. Do you know don't what I'm saying? Don't do that. <laughs> no, nah, man. I think is I think this is going to be good because this just gives another perspective on the way you see basketball, what mm-hmm. where basketball has taken you. I mean, we've had a multiple guys of that's in the league that's not in the league trying to work back in the league. Like we've we've touched every point of it and this is another another area that we can touch on i'm excited about it so i know you've seen a couple of them a couple clips and stuff but what we do here is we just pretty much want to start from the beginning where you from um and pretty much how you got to where you are today yeah we want to and we want to go through all of it so tyler listen where did it all start where you from um when did you start playing basketball and how'd you just get in loving this game Man, I'm from uh, Rochester, New York, mm-hmm. 585, you know, uh, dear to my heart. Mm-hmm. Um, we've had some dudes out of there. We got some dudes in the league right now. Yep. Isaiah Stewart, Thomas Bryant. Um, grew up there, man. My mom played professional basketball. That's what a lot of people don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, she coached at Davidson, mm-hmm. and my pops was a college football coach. Um, wow. So I, I had coaching in my background, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, basketball was always there. Mm-hmm. My dad was a was a major Michael Jordan fan. Um, so I, I I had no choice but to kind of grow up around it, right? Yeah. Um, my godmother, Lisa Boyer, she uh, she coached with the Cleveland Rockers, mm-hmm. who their point guard back in the day was Dawn Staley. Mm-hmm. Um, so I grew up watching a lot of film with her. And, uh, you know, now she's the uh, associate head coach of South Carolina. Mm. Um, so I, I've just had basketball kind of around me since I was little. I mean, I fell in love with it, man, at a young age. Um, I fell in love with like the process of it, you know, able to work on your own, stuff like that. And then, um, yeah, man, I had a good high school career in New York. Uh, got me a state championship, you know. Before we get to your high school state championship. Yeah. You said your dad was a football coach though. Yeah. Did you ever think about playing? Did you play football? I did. I, did, I, I played football. For how long? I played till seventh grade. Seventh grade. What position? I played quarterback. Really? Oh. Point guard, quarterback, they go hand in hand. Yeah, they do. They um, do. They do. I, they sure enough yeah. do. You ever thought about taking it further? You just like, I'm just a hooper. The thing I didn't, like, I love football. Mm-hmm. I love it to this day. Like, I mean, you and me talked about college football starting. Yeah. Like, I'm a diehard. I'm a diehard Giants fan. We lost it just yesterday, which that was crazy. I'm not going to talk about that. Um, <laughs> it was depressing, bro. Jesus Christ. It was depressing. I get off the flight. I'm tired. Yeah, that's tough. And it just gets worse. That's a bad one. Yeah. yeah. New York sports isn't a bad place. <laughs> um, no, but uh, yeah, he he coached football. I think for me, it was, I liked being able to do stuff on my own. So like mm. I would go and, you know, in the garage, I would dribble for hours, you know, like everybody's all the two ball stuff, whatever. Yeah. Like I, I was a player that like, I didn't have anybody work me out. I didn't have other players that, or other, like my friends weren't in the gym like me. Yeah. So I had to do a lot of stuff on my own. I'd be creative, stuff like that. And I fell in love with that part. And then the biggest thing was, is um, I'm super competitive. So 
there was an eighth grader. He was the first eighth grader ever in Rochester to play varsity mm. at the same school I was about to go to, which mm -hmm. we were like the powerhouse of in Rochester. And, and, uh, and my goal was to make varsity in eighth grade. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I just, I made it a goal and I just, I, I was like, man, I got to stop playing football and I got to commit. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of what got me out of football mm -hmm. and into, into, uh, into basketball. Yeah, I made it. Easy. I don't know if it was easy. I was like, <laughs> what, 5'10", 150. I look like a right. soccer player. Yeah. You know? Did you play any other sports? I didn't. Just basketball and basketball, football? Basketball, football. Shit. Yep. That's tough. Yep. What, what, just to the work ethic part, yep. at a young age, what, I mean, you probably grew up around it. Mm -hmm. That's what they instilled in you? Or was that it? Or was it something like you just love the game that much? Because to be complete honest, like, what I say I was in the gym working out all the time, no, I was not. Like, yeah. I would play basketball. That was me working out. Yeah. I just played basketball. Oh, uh, yeah, man. I mean, I, I, I loved, I just, I, I, I loved it. Mm -hmm. Um, and my dad was, was a extremely hard worker. Got you. So really didn't, you know, and, and, you know, I just kind of looked at what he did and I just followed his footpath. Right. Yeah. And, um, and it was in a different, you know, lane, line of work, but like, yeah. if you, I just watched what he did mm -hmm. and um, early mornings, get home late. Then, I mean, take us to practice, coach, whatever. T, you need me to rebound for you. Yeah. Um, so I watched him and then man, I just, I fell in love with it, man. Like I, the Carolina teams with uh, uh, Rasheed Wallace, Jerry Stackhouse, and then like the Ed Codas. Um, you know, I just, I couldn't get enough of it. I was trying to figure out who's the, like you didn't have what we had back in the day, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, you mentioned like Chris Paul, like I remember seeing him as a sophomore mm -hmm. at Five Star. Mm -hmm. um, and it just, I don't know, man, I just, I loved it. Go ahead. I mean, we've talked about it, but go ahead and get into like when you started getting out nationally and trying to compete against the best. Talk about that Five Star camp that you went to. Yeah, I mean, the first, you know, we, I come from like a small city, right? Yeah. Especially back in the day, like we didn't have any, my, my dad started the first AU program in my city. Really? Yeah. So. Okay. You know, we went around, we started playing these teams and played in Albany and stuff. And it was like, all right, let's see how, like, let's see how good. We really are. One, yeah, I am. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, I had a couple boys that were really, that ended yeah. up playing high school with me that were good too yeah. for our area. And um, and I was, you know, I went to, you know, start going to, to Albany and then it was like New York City. And then it was like, I'm like, oh, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm right nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm, I'm right here. Yeah. Like, I'm not. You know, mm -hmm. especially at that time, like I was seventh grade, but I was 5'10". Like I was, yeah. I was big. I could rebound. I could push it. Mm -hmm. I could shoot it. I was skilled. Um, and then I never grew again. Um, <laughs> That'll do it. Yeah. You know, and then, and then, I mean, it was like I went to five-star, the sophomore camp, and it was like LeBron, Chris Paul, um, Mike Jones played at Maryland, mm -hmm. um, Leon Poe. I think was there. There was just a bunch of dudes. And I was, I made the all-star team. Yeah. And, you know, Garf, Howard Garfinkel, me, he loved my work ethic. Mm -hmm. I got station 13. So they have 12 stations, right? Uh -huh. So station 13 is extra work. Yeah. And I never missed that in four years of going to five star. Damn. Right? Yeah. So it's 630 in the morning, you go. It was extra work. And I never missed it. So I always got station 13. So Garf always loved that about me. Mm -hmm. um, so like he pulled me up to play in like the NBA. And, and it was like Delonte West was up there, you know. And yeah. at the time, you don't think anything of it, right? Yeah. Um, even with LeBron, it was like, like you see him as a sophomore. You're like, yo, he why is he it. built like that? Yeah. <laughs> right? But you're cocky at the same time. You're like, oh, come on, man. Yeah. Like, I can still go Until ahead. you realize. What that, Yeah. yeah. Um, so man, you're it seeing just, him. I'm seeing him as a sophomore, as a peer, like you don't like everybody's talking about him, right? Yeah. Like Howard Garfinkel was like, he'll be the best player in the world one day. And I'm like, yeah, right. Yeah. Like, come on. And then, and then he just started, you know what I mean? He started <laughs> then he was took like, off. Oh my like, oh my gosh. Like he's definitely Who was somebody at five star? Because like, other than Braun, of course, mm -hmm. that people don't know about. 
or forgot about that you were there because a couple of names that you just named, like of course Chris was there, you were there. Yeah. Like this. So, you remember uh, Mustafa Shakur? Played uh-uh. in Arizona. He was from Philly. Mm-mm. He was. Uh, man, I want to say he was right behind Chris in the rankings. Mm-hmm. Um, bad dude. Nice. <sighs> Guard. What? Crazy nice. He was cold. Mm-hmm. Um, and he fit that game because we played outside. He was from Philly. Oh yeah. And and he was he was a bad boy. Uh, so I mean, a lot of people don't talk about Mustafa anymore, but man, he was, he was tough. Um, who else was out there? Um, it was five star can't bring back. Memories. It used to be what it was. That's what it was. And and you know, you know, and then uh, yeah, I mean, Chris was the one that like. Was that the one you wanted to go? I with? wanted him. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, like yeah. he, and, I mean, he was just different, but like that's what it was. I was it yeah. was good for me to see him for sure. Right, because you I'm knew like, where you wanted to go. I knew it. Like yeah. I'm like, all right, like, you know, mm-hmm. I can, I can, mm-hmm. you know, I can he's nice. Him. Yeah, I don't know about hanging with him, but I was, yeah. <laughs> you know, I could be on the court with him together. Yeah. You know what for I'm saying? Sure. For sure. Um, you know, but that's what I'm saying. Back in the day, those were guys like you wanted. If you were a competitor, you just were like, man, mm-hmm. I just want to compete. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and it was cool. Like looking back, like even talking to my son, he's like, oh, who'd you play against? I'm like, man, some good players. Yeah. For sure. You know, um, so it's cool. What was the, what was the, um, everyone has this, has a, I feel like in different stages of life with high school, college, and then when you get to professional or whatever you're doing at that point, there's an eye opening moment. LeBron. As soon as you saw that, you was like, oh. As soon as he punched my shot over two courts, I was like, oh, <laughs> I was like what is this? You know, it was like, because back in five star, like all coaches were there. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, oh. And I was, I, was, I was good back then, too. And I'm like, I just remember, pop, pop, pop. I'm like, oh, I got to lay. I'm getting scholarships. Yeah. Like, everybody right here. I'm like, ha. Ah. So they had court, court, court. Tossed it. What? <laughs> <laughs> Tossed. He threw it over three courts. I said, oh, man. <laughs> I said, this is, what it, this is what they do? Yeah. You know what I mean? And it was like, yeah. and LeBron, obviously, is way different. But I, mm-hmm. I just, I'll never forget that moment when he, I mean, punched it. Yeah. Like, volleyballed it. He probably timed it. He probably saw it. Um, but that was my moment of like seeing it. And then, mm-hmm. you know, I played against the UConn teams in, at West Virginia that won the national championship. Um, yeah. what, what was your recruiting like? How did your recruiting go in your high school days? Um, you know, I had a couple ACCs. Um, it was like Clemson, Pitt. Um, and then I had, you know, West Virginia, you yeah. know, where I ended yeah, up yeah. going. South Florida recruited me a little bit. So I was like more that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and then I had, you know, the good A-10s, mm-hmm. St. Joe's. Who was your first letter? My your first, first offer. My, my, first, my first offer was Northern Illinois. Really? I think I was a freshman. Really? Was I was at Northern. I went to camp there. I went I to camp, you, and then I went to camp at Illinois, too. Oh, wow. I know you remember the first letter, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, my first letter was in eighth grade from yeah. Clarkson University. Okay. Who thought I was a senior. They and they're D three, they're D three school. They so they thought I was a senior. senior. And uh, I'm like, man, Clarkson. You know, I wanted to play at Duke, Carolina. Yeah, 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 I'm like, yo, I'm. Yeah. You know who? Like, come on, yeah. bro. What's this? <laughs> For sure. And then again, I didn't grow. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's tough. So, so, what was the deciding factor for you in choosing uh, West Virginia? I mean, I know you got you got all these schools pretty around the same area, yo. same. Caliber, because like there's not one, like no offense to any of these schools, but like there's not one that just that sticks out. School. No, 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 not you know at what all. I'm no, uh, Big East, that was it. Mm. It was at the time, it was the best conference by far. Yeah, I grew up watching Syracuse on 50 Minutes, um, Lawrence Moton, John Wallace, Lazar Sims. Would you say by far? It was by far, all top to bottom, good teams. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't even close back then. No, it wasn't. ACC didn't come close to the Big East back in the day. But they were at the top. They had the, the top two teams were always good, though. No. Duke and Carolina weren't good back there? UConn? UConn had Ben Gordon, and Mecca Okafor, Charlie Villanueva, and Marcus Williams. What, what year was this? 2003, 2004. I mean, Carmelo was in the Big East. True. I mean, it wasn't even close. Right, right. I mean, you can, we can do the Carolina what talk think, and all huh? that. 
Pitt. Got a point. <laughs> I remember that Ben Gordon. Yeah, Pitt. Pitt had yeah. Pitt was number three in the country. Carl. Carl I would say. Carl I said, Krauser, Chevy. I agree. Troutman. Top to bottom, the Big East was probably better. It was still. I mean, the top was the best. They won the national championship. I mean, it's we Clint can, Syracuse yeah. did. If you want to talk about the A ten, I'll give you the ACC. Yeah. All right. <laughs> no, Syracuse won the year before. Yes. With Mello. With Mello. And then UConn won my freshman year with Ben and oh, Omeka. Oh, okay. You're right. You're and it right. wasn't even like You're at right. the time when the Big East was it. Yeah. Even Miami was good. Not saying like Miami's good now, and they, but Miami was in it. Boston College was in it. They had, they had Jalen Dudley. Yeah, 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 they had Craig right. Smith. You're right. Let me shut the hell up. Yeah. Sean Marshall. You're right. First of all, who was the Williams dude that does play with? Or was it? The big that played with duds. Oh, Will, um, yeah, six ten dude. He I heard a, he, he was, was the a goods. monster. Sean Williams. Sean, I heard he was a monster. Monster. That's but that was night in night out. I'm like I'm like oh man, this yeah. is kind of wild. So you play you played in college. So you just chose West Virginia strictly off. That was your only yeah, biggest school. It was a big yeah. It was the Big East. I mean Pitt, but it was. <sighs> I, John, John Beeline was Lemoyne. He was from my area. Yeah. The style, he had just come from Richmond. Yeah. Um, it was a two-guard offense. Um, I felt at the time I could fit into that, right? Because, yeah. I mean, if you watch how basketball is played now, it's, it's actually a lot of, like, you know, yeah. big pops, pitch it, mm -hmm. off-screen splits, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then um, I just felt like I could fit into it. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, my dream since I was – I can remember it was the Big East. Man. Big East. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to play at the Dome. Like, I wanted to, you know, I wanted that. You took all your officials? No. I took one. Done. Me too. I took well, one and done. Yeah, but you went to Carolina. <laughs> no, I took two. I went to Indiana and Carolina. I don't even know if I would have had to take it as the Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> you never got recruited by? Doherty hit me when I was younger, freshman, sophomore. Really? Yeah. Again, I never grew. So he didn't. didn't yeah, he's you. great. I was, but I was. Problem. I thought I was JJ. I was gonna be JJ Reddick. But I wasn't. <laughs> I would get that. You know. So you get to West Virginia. What was your welcome to college moment? Uh, I mean, man, the first game we played James Madison, and I played really well. Mm -hmm. I had like fourteen and five. I'm like, I'm like, oh yeah, it's easy. I'm, yeah, this yeah. is. Yeah. I'm with this really is good. It? This is. No. I'm nice. Yeah. Uh, and then we went and we played uh, at Miami Heat Arena. We played Florida, and they had David Lee. Uh huh. And they beat the <laughs> dog shit out of us. And I was like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, I'm like, "This diff like grown man, you know, as a freshman." You oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And like you're six seven. Mm. I'm six. Like yeah, it's a know? different type of. It's a different. Beast. It's a different type of physicality. Confidence, yeah, knowing where to be because, like, it when you're a freshman, you're still trying to figure the shit out, yeah, and play at the same time, yeah. And I had a high IQ, so I figured I didn't, that wasn't it. Was like, like we played one three one. I was in the bottom. Oh yeah, you just so like you just, everything's in front of you. Yeah, if I got Ben Gordon in the corner though, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I got Charlie Villanueva on the backside. Yeah, and Talik Brown beats him off the dribble. I got. A mecca running at me. Like, what's my choice? My choice is I'm gonna get dunked on. Yeah. It's just who's gonna do it. Yeah. <laughs> right? Pick your poison. Right. So I mean, like, I think UConn was the biggest, like, oh, whoa. Yeah. These dudes are different. different. Like they yeah. came off the bench with pros. Yeah. Josh Boone was a freshman. Uh Hilton Armstrong, bro. I mean, I wasn't like, I'm Denim Brown. Y'all got y'all. There was ass. like nine of them. Y'all got your ass whooped. What? What? What year were y'all good? Who, West Virginia? Yeah. Well, I left. I know you left. What so year? we went to the NIT. We yeah. were good. Yeah. And you know, like as a freshman, you're like, man, I'm better than I. Then, you know, when you just, you get the wrong people around you yeah. telling you, man, you should have done this, that, mm -hmm. instead of sticking out and staying. Mm -hmm. The year after, they went to the uh, Elite Eight. They beat Chris, Paul, and Wake Forest in the Sweet 16. And, um, and they lost. They were up 20 on Louisville. In the regional final at halftime, and they, they ended up losing Francisco Garcia and those guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And they ended up losing. 
Um, so you wish you should stay. You wish you stayed. Come on, at that moment, like I'm watching these dudes almost go to the final four, and then you think like, oh, if I was playing, I could have helped them. Yeah. You know, and then I'm at Bonaventure mm. at the time, and I'm like, it was just drastically different. Drastically. <laughs> <laughs> so it's so drastic. You know, so it was. I'm Shit, like, that was a welcome to college moment right there. Damn, boy, it was a welcome to damn. I really want to do this. Yes. <laughs> do y'all want me back? Why'd you leave? Um, man, multitude of reasons. I mean, girls. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you ever been to West Virginia? I drove past it. So there's a street called Grant Street. Yeah. And then there's the Coliseum where the gym is. Yeah. You were on Grant Street. Grant Street. I was on Grant Street a lot. <laughs> was on Grant Street. Yeah, they had Thirsty Thursdays. It was dope. <laughs> you know? And you were a freshman. I was the highest, highest recruited kid in, to West Virginia last, like, yeah. long time. Mm -hmm. You know? And so it's, it's a pretty much a refocus. Yeah, but I never drank in high school. Mm. Never. Oh, yeah. I and then either. I got there. Ooh, boy, it was. Yeah, yeah. I didn't either. I was, man, Incredible Hogs. Y'all remember that? Yeah. Boy. Ah, oh, damn. Man. It's like you're preaching to a choir. It was bad. I didn't drink in high school either. Yeah. It was a rude awakening. Yeah, I wish I didn't. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't. know. But Grand Street was Grand Street was fun. So it was more of a reset for you. Yeah, I mean, if you want to say I reset, <laughs> I didn't reset at all. I didn't reset until my senior year. Uh-huh. So yeah, I mean, I you know, I've talked about it on other like podcasts or even like my story. Like I just you know, I even talk about it with like the I think that's one of the reasons I love what I do. Yeah. It's cause I can talk to other players about like Hey man, like I look back all the time and I'm like, yo, if I had never done that, like I don't know how good I could have been. What are you telling me? But I, I was, I mean, ridiculous. Mm. I was ridiculous. You know, like I was out before games, night. You know, like I was, I wasn't Chris Heron, but I was, bro, I was out. Like I was yeah. in the streets. Like me and my boy, we played Richmond, DC, DC, like Rose Bar, in DC, pulling up. You know what I mean? I just wish I never did it. So I think it's a good way of like telling kids, hey man, like it's really hard once you get to a certain point in your life to look back and say, what if? There, that's yeah. a very, that's a thing you don't want to do. Yeah, because at the end of the day, <laughs> Rose Bar's still there. Rose Bar's great. It's not going nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> you not, know what I'm saying? Like no. Rose Bar won't go anywhere. Right. You do your work. But your opportunities. Exactly. It, your opportunities will leave you right away. And I think like that's the whole thing. Like, it's like it's funny. Like you always, I always like everybody. Man, Tyler, you was crazy. I'm like, yeah, I was crazy, and it's funny. And then it's yeah. like, and then it gets to a point of like, it's, it's like, yeah, it's really, it's not funny. Yeah. Because you just you missed on so many opportunities. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but I mean, you live and you learn, and and, but it did take me a while to get over that for sure. Like, for sure. Leaving West Virginia, all that. It's talk like even talking to you, and like I said, the thing is with me, and I know sometimes. I don't know the stories before we do this. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, I like to learn as we go because I think that it creates the authentic conversations. Right. So knowing you and hearing you talk about you love the Big East, knowing how competitive you are yeah. and understanding you want to play the best of the best, and then you find out your team goes to the Elite Eight the next year, Boy. I know it ate you alive. Oh, for years. For years even after I, even after I stopped playing. Probably till I was like 29. Yeah. Like you're still like, bro. I wish I was still a part. I could have played. In the, I could have played in the final four. Yeah, that's tough. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like anytime you watch an NCAA tournament, I'm like, I could have been right there. I could have experienced. Yeah. I could experience. I could have really been there. Um. So yeah, it sucks. But I mean, I you know you live and you learn, and then yeah. you know. But yeah, I'm competitive, and that sucked. That's tough. That sucked. Going to St. Bonnie though. Mm -hmm. What 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 drew you there? I don't know. Just went. I just went. I with two of my best friends now. Mm. I went on my visit with uh, mm. Greg Lewis and Ahmad Smith. Um, like Greg's in Dallas. Yeah. Um, now and Ahmad's in DC. But like, you know, I, I just was at the time. I was like, man, like who, who, like, and we just clicked on my visit. Um, Ahmad was a. Really good player. Mm -hmm. um, gym rat. Really want to be in the gym. So, like, you know, as much as we did go out still, like, mm 
we did work out, we did stuff, and um, you know, and man, I, I don't honestly, I don't know. Just one. it was close to home, hour and a half. True, true, um, very close to home. But now, you know, I, I mean, I, I love St. Bonaventure. Yeah, it's such a cool place. Mm. Um, you know, and uh, we're all good. No, we sucked. Whole time. The whole time. My first, my first look at the A10. Do you know who we played? Who? Jameer Nelson and Delonte West. Do you know how much they beat us by? And I didn't play. I was sitting down. 54. They beat you by a total points of 54, 54. points. Jameer Nelson at halftime didn't even go in the locker room. He just went out there and just made like 20. He was just putting on a show for those, for the fans. Oh, man. I'm like, these dudes are pretty good too. What do you mean? He, what did he do? He just was, he made like, he was making like 33s in a row just out there. They were like, oh, our fans. Oh, oh. Something we're down by. <laughs> that we're, is crazy. We're down bro. by 30. Yeah. You know, we just come off, we're not even off probation. We're in probation because mm -hmm. we got in trouble from Van Bredikoff. Yeah. Right. So I came with the next staff and it was just like, it was like, hey, man, we got to, you know, this is like a rebuild, right? Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, we were terrible. And then the coach who's there now who turned the whole program around, mm -hmm. who I, I say to this day turned my life around, um, my senior year was awesome. I loved it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and coaching has so much to do with that. And that's one of the reasons why I, like, I still love, like, I love what I do. There's so many. I came from a coaching background. I feel like I got a great rapport and, with players and understanding that every kid, every every person's different. Like you're not the same as Drew. You're not the mm -hmm. same as Doe. Mm -hmm. There's different players. Yeah. Um, and he just changed my life. So I was like, man, this is, you know, he was just so, he was. What was something that he did to help you? I mean, I was still getting in trouble at. The same body. Yeah, yeah. Like mm -hmm. they tried to, the coach at the time who was there before, like he tried to kick me off the team. Mm -hmm. Right. And then the AD was like, no. Nah, what are yeah. talking about? <laughs> you know, but like he was. He was, it was, it was a bad, it was bad. Yeah. To a point of like, it was bad, bad. Yeah. Um, like it was a point of like, really none of us, we just all hated ball. Like you're talking about kids who grew up hooping. You know what I mean? We all just were like, man, this is just, we hate this. Yeah. Like it's miss. We don't want to go to practice. Like we just, we want to be as far away from the gym as possible. Um, Damn. and then he comes in, meets with me and is like, Hey man, you got a clean slate with me, but you got to, Proved to me you were the player you were like before you got to college. Yeah. And I said, oh. I said, cool. I got you. Mm -hmm. So, man, he had like 400 sets. Like, he's a genius. And I have, I still have a notebook. It's like all the sets. Like, I studied. Because I was a fifth year senior. I already, so I was in school a whole lot. And yeah. I just studied everything he did. Like, I was so locked in on him. Like, mm -hmm. I was like, all right. Because I wanted to learn. I was, I was back in my mode. Back, yeah. I was back to high school, right? Yeah, yeah. I was in the gym. I was making... 200 threes a day after practice. I was doing my ball handling again. I was, I had to make 98 out of 100 free throws to leave the gym. I led the country in free throw percentage that year. Damn. Yeah, I didn't miss in conference. Didn't miss one free didn't throw. Didn't miss one free throw. But it was the work I put in. And then I'm averaging in conference. I get healthy. My foot was broken. I get healthy. I'm averaging like, I think I ended up averaging like 16 and 6 in the A10. And I'm like, I'm like, oh yeah. Like I started feeling, you know, I was yeah, getting twenties. Yeah. Like I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm back. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, I'm gonna play pro. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. Um, and my assistants, you know, who played pro, they were like, oh yeah, yeah, for sure, you can play pro. Yeah. Like go overseas somewhere, not like you know. Yeah. Um, and so he, that just all that changed everything for me. That's big time. That's big yeah. time. I, I, I have said it multiple times on here, like. As a coach, and I don't know if I'm going to go into coaching. I have no idea. But if I was a coach, I'm instilling the most confidence in my players that you can pop. My, my teammates mm -hmm. will feel, my, my uh, players will feel like they're Michael Jordan. Right. Because they're going to do things and they're going to work just as hard for you because, like, he believes in me. You want to win for your coach, right? At the end of the day? At but the end of the day. You want to work for, like, that's what it is. It's always been that. But and, that's that's the whole point between a good coach and like X's and O's is you know I mean you and me have talked about that yeah, yeah. plenty. Mm -hmm. I mean the first time I met you we were talking yeah about, yeah you know, exactly we won't get into all that. <laughs> but um but yeah X's and O's means a lot. I think like you know coaching in certain games 
is a lot, right? Like mm. if it, but at the same time, like players got to make plays. Got to. And then you have to instill that in your guys. You got to mm-hmm. put them in their spots and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah. I, I think that's big time. So you finish at St. Bonnie. You had you go off averaging 16. You don't miss a free throw. That's what you end up shooting out here. I ended up shooting 94. 94. 94. You missed one. You missed a couple. I missed before conference when I was in, you know, my foot. I think it was my balance or something. Yeah. Oh my God. This guy. It's crazy, you know. <laughs> Yeah, you know, just keep these two in the ring. Yeah, That's whatever. Was, yeah, whatever. You know? All right, so you get to <laughs> you done that same body. I'm good when nobody guards me. You know that. Yeah, that's a fact. I was that, good when you guarded me too. We could go. We could keep going. You rolled your ankle and you were out for like three weeks out there. You got. I did there. roll my ankle. That's yeah. all right though. I was moving fast. You were moving too damn fast. Yeah. You forgot how old you were. I'm athletic. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Price Picks, the presenting partner of Run Your Race, the daily fantasy sports game. Head over to prizepicks.com or the app. Price Picks makes it super easy and it takes less than 60 seconds to make your entry. As AJ said, it's very easy. You pick between two to six players. It's a skill based fantasy game. You don't play against anyone, you're playing against the Price Picks projections. It's simple, it's either more or less. Price Picks is the only daily fantasy sports game that has injury insurance. With Price Picks injury insurance, if one of your players get injured, your entry still stays in play. You can make up to 25 times your money this football season. Y'all know me. I rock with my Dallas Cowboys all year. And you already know we locked in on the NFL season. But Price Picks also offers college football and many other sports. But Price Picks also is matching your first $100 deposit. So if you put in $100, they match $100. But if you put in $20, they match $20. Go to prospects.com slash race and use code race for your first deposit match up to $100. You get done to St. Bonnie. Yep. It's pro time. Where did you do next? I trained. I'm working out. Um, and I was, I was at one of the gyms in where I grew up. Mm. And my knee was bugging me. Bugging me, bro. And I'm like, man. Um, and I got I got my bags in my basement packed, right? Mm-hmm. So I was going to Reykjavik, Iceland. Mm-hmm. So I was pumped. I'm like, yeah, my, you know. But my knee, you know, I, I so I had I had bone spur surgery on my ankle, right? I had microfracture surgery on my knee in college, or in um, I had surgery on my knee in college. Like I, I was hurt a lot. Yeah. Uh, broke my foot all through my career in college. So I was like, all right, I'm healthy. But then my knee started bugging me. Because back in the day, you don't know. Like, I wasn't doing what. Yeah, you know, I'm not doing. Yeah, yeah. You know, now I'm in the, all the animal flow stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. you see how I be getting. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, like, I wasn't doing that back then. I was on the court. Yeah. Um, it started bugging me. Whatever I went in, they were like, hey, man, you need microfractures. Damn. So, at the time, nobody had that. Mm. Like, it was such. And then they were like, this is going to be a, a year and a half. I'm like, a year and a half? Like, I'm going to lose a step. Right? Yeah. And like a year and a half, I don't have a year and a half. Yes. So, bro, I, I probably sat in that basement, bro, for five days and just cried. Cause it was done. I knew it was over. And so like you play, like my last game was against Fordham, right? Mm-hmm. And like I didn't think that was the last time I'd ever hoop. Right? Um, I just remember playing at Rose Hill Gym. Um, you know, Brian Dunstan and and we were playing, you know, who's playing the Euro League, like good players and uh and I didn't think it was the last time. And then it was the last that time. Was it. Yeah. And uh How'd you that, play? so that took a lot out of me mentally. Yeah. You know, so I dealt with a ton of like just basketball mental stuff, right? Yeah. Um, and then uh, yeah, man, I went and coached. I really was trying to get back in shape to be like, yo, I'm gonna give it a try. Mm-hmm. And then I just started, I went back to Bonaventure, started working like out the guys, and um, they were like, yo, why don't you do this? I'm like, do what? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? They're like, man, why don't you just like, because they would just work out with me. Yeah. They were like, yo, we're like, I feel nice. Yeah. You know, because like, I, you know how, like, I like dudes getting there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm not, hey, man, sit in the corner and don't you move. Like, I let, like, I, you got to, I don't care who you were, if you play, like, you at some point you were that dude. Yeah. So what made you that dude? Mm-hmm. And a lot of times people take that away from players. Mm-hmm. I try to you know, instill it back while yeah. still maintaining what they do well. For sure. Um, so that's kind of how I got into it, man. And uh, and I was just started like researching like, 
what is it? What are y'all like? What are you talking about? Because yeah. I was gonna coach. Yeah, you know, um, because I enjoy X's and O's. Like you know, mm, I do for sure. I love that stuff. Um, and then uh, yeah, I fell into coaching, man, or it's training, whatever it is that we do. It's so crazy. Like you think about the situation where you're going through a whole lot of injuries. You don't realize that's your last game, and then next thing you know, you're looking back on the time before, right? Like, shit. Yeah. From a dude that put so much time into it, yeah. It was like, wait, what? Like, a lot of time. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I was a worker worker. Um, so, yeah, it hurt, man. Like, Just coming from, because you know a lot of people that, uh, I remember I even watched my, uh, my homeboy, Brandon Robinson. He played at Carolina. He, um, he's a coach now. And I'm just like, just thinking about, he's put, that much time in it and he just went straight to coaching. And like this, I don't know what happened. Right, like this is what I got out like, of it. Like this is this, yeah, <laughs> like I'm like, I'm like, damn, like yeah. it's so wild to think about because everything has gotten you. This is your calling. Yeah, my life was basketball. I had like, nothing else. The fact that you like you're super good at what you do, and you're not even thinking about that. Like, just yeah. think about it. You just said. I had no idea what they were talking about. They'd be yeah. like, you should do this. You're like, what the hell is this? Yeah, I'm well, just working out. It wasn't a business back then at that yes. time like that, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. I didn't train with anybody in high school. Got in the gym, was like, called up like one of my boys. was like, hey, man, get your fat ass over here and rebound. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, we'll go drink later. Yeah. You know what I mean? Type yeah, thing. Like, literally. It was like that. That's who I grew up with. Kid, Like, it was like, yo. They're like, ah, oh, shit. All right, bro. You That's know? Crazy. That's crazy. You know, like, they all thought I was crazy. And you were over here prepping for what you're doing now. Yeah, no, even but had no clue. Had no, no, yeah, I, not a clue. That is wild. Not crazy. a clue. So you get, you are now training. Mm -hmm. You get done at St. Bonnie. You're not training those guys anymore. You're, what did you do after you figured out, I this is what I'm going to do? Well, I started calling like coaches because I still had contacts, right? So yeah. John Brennan, who at the time was uh, with Anthony Grant at Alabama. Yep. Um, you know, I called him, was just like, hey, man, like, because they had, at the time, they had um, Levi Randolph coming in, yep. Trevor Lacey, yep. um, and they had uh, J. Michael Green. Mm -hmm. and I went I on a visit there, when I think, when they was there. They were good. Yeah. And um, so I was like, all right, how do, I, how do I get into this? Like, so I'm like, hey, man, can I, like, come down there for a couple months and, like, just work with your guys? Yeah. Um. And that's what I did. I went down there for two months, mm -hmm. worked with their guys, um, you know, and, and I mean, I still talk to Levi, Levi to this day, man, like, you know, really having a good European career. And um, so that was my first, like, go at it, mm -hmm. um, not knowing what I was doing. No. I was just putting guys through workouts. Yeah. It's so much more detailed than that. Yeah. It's supposed to be more detailed than that. Yeah. Right? Um, but like I was, I was a, back then I was a workout guy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, I was yeah. like, all right, we going to do this. You're going to make this. You're going to, you know, that's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to get super tired. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to get tired. Right. Um, and then that's how I got into it, man. And then, uh, yeah, man, I, I, uh, I ended up training Amar Stoudemire. Um, How'd you get that one? Um, through this other trainer. Mm. Um, and then uh, still at the time, I like, didn't know what I was doing, right? Mm -hmm. Like, if I had Amari today, it'd be way different. Yeah. Right? Yeah, for sure. Because um, you're learning as you go. Yeah. Because you, you weren't planning on this. No. And I'm like, like. Yeah. You know, and then I came to Dallas and, and, and the rest is just, you know, the rest is really history. I, I honestly came to Dallas thinking, all right, man, like, I'm going to do this for a little while. Mm -hmm. And then I'll probably get into coaching or something. Yeah. Um, you know, because I liked it and it was like, I'm young, I'm going to go to Dallas, it's going to be cool. Mm. You know, I've never been to like Dallas before. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and then, you know, now it's what? It'll be, uh, it's almost 12 years later. 12 years later. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. 12 years later, three kids. Shoot. <laughs> Boy, it's different. Boy, you're growing up. Man. My goodness. Yes, sir. What was your first, 
of course Amari was, but you're not. Amari wasn't in Dallas anymore. No, no Amari he, was never in Dallas. He Amari, was never in Dallas. No, and, and, and Amari never played here. Nope. Yeah. So he had just left Phoenix. He was going to New York. Got you. And uh, and it was crazy because I went to like I traveled with him. Mm -hmm. So he had like a house in the hills in LA. He had like he had spots. Yeah. I'm so like, oh my god. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm walking like, and he's got like he was one of the highest played players in the league. Yeah. I'm like, yo. Different lifestyle. What? Different lifestyle. He's like, yeah, we gonna go to Atlanta for this. He like puts me up in this hotel. I'm like, yeah. Ca I'm calling all my boys. I'm like, man, man, you should. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, bro. You should see it's all the rappers here, bro. Everybody here. <laughs> Like I'm in this hotel room. It's like I'm like, well, I don't even know. I remember the TV came out the, uh, out the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm I've never been in that. I yeah, played, yeah. My budget was St. Bonaventure, yeah, bro. We yeah. was. They gave us twenty dollars to go get McDonald's. I feel that. I, I, feel I, that. I couldn't even figure out the TV. I had to call the front desk. I'm like, hey, y'all don't have TVs in here? Yeah. And then they're like, hey man, it's just yeah. a button. I'm like a button. <laughs> I'm like looking, I'm That's like, oh tough. man, it's like a spaceship. Talk about all the guys you've trained. Let the people know. I mean, everybody knows me by Julius for sure, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, that's different. That's my dog. Yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've I've had you know Scotty Barnes has come through, CJ Miles, Dallas Legend, mm -hmm. Miles Turner, uh, Buddy Heald, um, Dorian Finney, Dodo. Dodo. Shout out Dodo. Shout out Dodo. Um, Sterling Brown. Um. Man, I, it's there's a lot. I mean, Skylar Diggins, Arike Abumawali, um, Taya Cooper. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I mean, there's my a boy Wendell. There's come up here. Yeah, Wendell, yeah, yeah. 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 Like we've had, we've had guys like, and that's the thing. Like you get guys that are like your guys, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you get guys that come through. Yeah, that's a fact. Right, like a Scotty a Barnes fact. come through. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And that's one of the things like with training is like I don't try to claim. Mm -hmm. You know, like some people are like. I had no guy. clue I even like worked out Scotty Barnes a couple times. But like, yeah. what did I do for you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like I think that's like you know what I'm, it's mm. it's different, right? Like, yeah, yeah I worked out Scotty Barnes. Like Scotty Barnes is cool. Like he hit me when I had the baby, was like, hey man, congratulations. Yeah. Like, but it's not, I'm not out here claiming I did stuff. I think sure. my big one of my biggest though, Derek Rose. So when Jew was in New York, I went out there, you know. Yeah. yeah. And 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 I was working out Jew. On one side, he was working on the other, and 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 he was just, you know, I got with his trainer who now coaches at Illinois, and there he yeah. was, he was like, "Hey man, you you want to work out, you know, Derek for the next five days?" I'm like, "D Rose," <laughs> I'm like, "Derek Rose," yeah, like him, mm. like 21 year old yeah. Derek Rose was gonna be the best point guard to ever play basketball. Yes, right. I'm like, so I'm like, oh man, so you know, the whole time, like I'm I'm in at this point, I'm this like two years ago, mm -hmm. like I'm solidify yeah i'm like yeah and i'm like bro i've never been so nervous nervous what but i was up all night writing drills down throwing the paper writing drills down throwing the paper writing drills down boom throwing the paper i'm like man, i can't fuck this up <laughs> how'd it go he loved he was just like man do your thing bro i know who you are and i was like <laughs> that's hilarious i'm like oh, okay he's like man you trying me you trying joke I'm like, all right, all That's right. That's a fact. You know? That's a fact. Um, Talk about Julius, man. You've, yeah. You got Julius at what age? 15, maybe. I mean, I don't know, 15, 14, 15, something. But he was bad. He was bad boy back then. What do you was, mean he was bad? He was, he was just good. He was good. He didn't have, he wasn't like, he didn't have like what he has now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Bruiser. Had, but, bro. Come through the lane and just be <laughs> running through my. Did didn't have just was like exactly, like I'm still to this day he does the same like he tries yeah. to hurt people. Yes, um, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like yes. I just posted a video the other day. I mean, but he almost gave me a. I mean, probably did give me a concussion about three weeks. Oh yeah, I saw that. It's crazy. You didn't see the one that my head bounces off the floor. Oh, I didn't see that one. And he don't even stop. Yeah. He just. Yeah. Bitch. Yeah. <laughs> And you know how I am. I'm like, I'm seeing stars. I'm, yeah. like, I'm like, man, I ain't, I'm right back out. You know, uh, yeah. boom. Man, there, you just see what happened, bro? You almost yeah. killed me. Mm -hmm. um, you knew. Yeah, like, he was different, man. He was different. The biggest thing with him is, like, getting him, it was getting him on a routine. Understanding, like, hey, this is, like, 
this is what's going to make your you be dominant. Dominant, and this is your like the game was changing at the time, right? Yeah. So there was no like, like I'm like you got to expand your game, like mm -hmm. you got to get you got to you got to score from different levels, right? And then it was like a, the process of it, and that was the best part with Jew is like, like we butted. I mean, but he'll tell you a story like his pre draft, bro. We butted. Him. I kicked him out the gym. You know, he's like, and we were pressing with. He's like, this is my spot. So you know, like we yeah, just back and forth. For sure. But I call. You know, call back home like yeah. shit. I just lost shit. Damn near probably the best player I got. <laughs> I'm like my my training career probably might be done. Yep. <laughs> you know, and then he hits me that night, and he's like, he's like, man, that's some real shit. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's the moment that our relationship went that way. That, yeah, because he respected like that. I did not Bunch. care that I actually cared about him. Yeah, you know what I mean? That I wasn't a yes man. And like, you wanted we were, him to be great. Yeah, because you saw it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I saw it. And that's what helped me with, like, training Amari before him. Mm -hmm. It's like I saw Amari and I knew, like, what it looked like. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's facts. And um, and I'm like, bro, you could be so special. Yeah. You know? And, like, but you got to put the work in. And then he, you know, he changed his body. Um, you know, we, we we still to this day, we have a story. We He was in L.A. And it was, bro, he ate, he used to eat terrible. Really? To a whole different extent. <laughs> So he plays the game. He's so picky now. Oh, he will. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. Now he's it's, a completely yeah. different. Now I was like, how much? How much? Is there any sugar in here? Mm. It's like, damn, bro. Like, <laughs> you know. Um, but he was. We went. We were in LA, and he was bro, rookie contract. Like, you know, Kobe it was Kobe's. It might have been Kobe's going away year. Yeah, I think it was going away. Year. It was his second year in the league because he broke. Remember, he broke his. He leg. didn't play his whole first year. Right. Yeah. Um, but one of the reasons why I didn't, you know, he had, he just wasn't so, but I walked in the, after the game and there's, bro, he's got five Cokes, fried food, every, yo, chicken, fried chicken everywhere, French fries. I remember sitting there and I was like, I was just like, I'm so like, I was just mad at him. And I'm like, yo, what are you doing? Yeah. He's like, bro, you ever listen to Floyd Mayweather? I'm like, bro, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> he's like, Floyd Mayweather said he drinks Coke. I was like, my are you not Floyd Mayweather? And you're not a boxer. Wait, which I don't even know if that's true. <laughs> yeah. like, are you just saying some shit to me at this point? Um, you know, and then, you know, he started getting hell, like he started paying attention to it. And then just the profession, like he's just, he just the person, yeah, everything. Yeah. It's dope to see. So man, yeah, Jew is like, you know, I mean, everybody knows. Like, I mean, that's my that's my ace in the hole, bro. For sure. For sure. For sure. You know, like it's crazy to think, like. I mean, the court's named after, like he's, you know what I mean? Like, that's how close we are. The dude is, it's so funny because, me and you can attest to this. Unbelievable person. Yeah. Unbelievable person. You wouldn't know that on the court. No. Because he's going to try to kill you. He's going to try to run through you, mm -hmm. and he wants to destroy you at all times. Yep. And that was from high school. What? Bro, I got so many injuries from him. <laughs> like, it's crazy. It's it's nuts. I mean, Did he, he have the same work ethic in high school? No. Or was that instilled? He worked like, like when he worked, he worked. But gotcha. like there was, I mean, I like I was putting him through. Like we were talking about it uh, when we went out there. Like when he was in high school, it was like uh like there's different phases in development. Yeah. There's like detail, but there's also like yo, you gotta work. Mm -hmm. you gotta be a dog you gotta fight through things like mm -hmm. you can't like there's no quit so <laughs> we used to do this one on two mm. so him and then I used to bro, I used to kick the ball down the floor yeah. I'd be like man go get that shit <laughs> and it was probably at the time it was like yeah yeah all this bullying you doing yeah, you know and he used to man, he'd run down go get it or like he'd be about picking it up I'd boot it the other way you know but he was I mean he just it was crazy it was yeah, there's probably some footage, but we were talking about it the other day. Um, there was a time I kicked Brad Ball is life from Ball is life. I yeah. kicked the ball, right, and it hit the camera like dead in the camera. Uh -huh. Like Brad had like a black eye. <laughs> so like it was like we just been through so many. We really came up in this together, right? Like because mm -hmm. I was young when I met him. Like I got better as time went. Mm -hmm. Like it really was like a maturation process together in both of our careers. That's dope, bro. That's dope. I mean, just to see how his game is involved from year to year has been super impressive. Because when Drew first got in, he wasn't a shooter. 
No, he wasn't a shooter. He didn't have him like he didn't. He was just like people were like, "All right, he's Zach Randolph." I'm like, "Yeah." I'm, yeah. Like, I'm like, "Damn." Am I wrong for the? I, I don't and Zach I'm, Randolph was um, uh, issue. Right, but the game at the time was evolving. Was going this like it wasn't. Yeah. You know, I'm like Zach Randolph was him. Yeah. Like you yeah. know, bullies get bullied. I remember, Problem. Yeah. What? Problem. Like Memphis, he yeah. was him. Yeah. But the game was still. The game was going like. You know, and Zach Randolph still could have been, you know, so if you see this, Zach, I'm not, I'm yes. not saying nothing. <laughs> but like Jew was, I, I felt at the time, I, like Jew's game had to transform into what the game was starting to become. Mm -hmm. And it was very like, I'm like, all right, we got to, our ball handling, like our spots, like you got to be really good in the mid range. And we got to kind of like just slowly get you out, right? To the three. Yeah. To the three. And then, you know, um, you know, he started really just, you know, and then he played with like True Holiday and Anthony Davis mm -hmm. um, and had a good year, you know, and then went to New York. Um, yeah, I'm a New York, you know, I'm from yeah, New York. So it was like, was damn, like, the Knicks? Yeah, I'm like, good. this is dope. Yeah. You know, and then he still had to evolve there. And now, you know. Talk about the year when I was there. Mm -hmm. The leap, the jump, he, what, what was it? I got it. I got it. It was the summer. What, what happened that summer, bro? It was, we were just really, we were, we were strategic, man. It was uh, like, we just, we really locked in. He was in the gym a lot mm -hmm. and he went hard. We, we, the one thing we did that summer, which I was trying to like tell him through the years was I'm a big fan of elevation in the mid range. Like you and me have talked about that. Mm -hmm. Like if you want to be a very good player, make end of shot clocks, ISOs, gotta you got to elevate. Like D-Book, KDs, mm -hmm. Kobe's, mm -hmm. the Jordans, um, you know, guys that can just jump over the top of you. Yeah. Right? And I felt like that was like the phase we needed to get in. So that like that year, he was a mid-range killer. Assassin. And he he was, drove right to that baseline? Oh, Count it. Yeah, over the top of people. Count it. But I mean, we did so many drills to kind of work on that. And, and he just, he locked in and and I mean, he even like will tell you, like, he's like, man, I used to do like, yo, you're one dribble to the corner. You are jumping as high as you can. We're making 30. Right? Yeah. And he hated it. Mm -hmm. But it but it helped him because it was like he was getting, like he was making, he still does, like, even look at Lad, like he makes tough shots. Mm -hmm. You know, like he's a, he don't get tough a whole summer. lot easy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so, but that summer was just like, a, it was a lock-in. It was a lock-in on the body. It was, mm -hmm. it was, everything was right. It was eating right. It was, it was everything. It was everything. What goes into, and that's just, just a pure indication of what type of workouts and stuff. And like, people are just gravitating towards working out with you and just getting in the gym with you and stuff like that. What is a, because for me, I'm not going to hold you. This year was, Low key a blessing in disguise because I didn't work mm. on my game like I have, like I did with y'all this this summer. Because I feel like, and you let me know if I'm wrong, I think guys work out people and they don't use their imagination. Yeah. Like you let guys use their imagination. Like you'll be like, all right, the this is what we're gonna do. You I want you to go. Double between here, go here, go there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I think that is something that is missing in training. Well, I think like great players are great players. Yeah. And like, I guess everybody can't do that either, though. Right. Like, I mean, like, there's like, I mean, like Theo, like my nine year old son. Yeah. Right. Like, at times, like, you got to be like, all right, this is what we're doing. Like, I, there's certain things as a trainer, like, this is what we'll work on. This is the detail. True. Like, you True. are doing this. True. And, you know, like with Jew, we're going two, tri two dribble, four step to the baseline. You're jumping as high as you can. Mm -hmm. Don't do shit else, bro. Yes. Right? Yeah. Um, but like, you know, we do stuff like, you know, DHO out of the corner into a rescreen and like you're getting downhill in the big, you know, like there's times that like, it's like, all right, let's work this move. Yeah, yeah, but then sure. there's times like, it's like, all right, you got to let dudes be dudes. Yes. Um, and let, you know, and like, I don't, you know, like you've worked out with me tons is... Like, I don't want guys thinking. Yes. I'll be detailed. Mm -hmm. And like, you've had moments where you're like, yo, show me that a couple more times. Cause it's like, you know, um, 
Or I'll be like, hey, man, your pickup, like, you know, timing or whatever, stuff yes. like that. Yeah. But I don't want, I want guys to have things that they can go to, feel mm. comfortable with, and not take away from mm. what they're already great at. Mm. That's, a, that's something that I think trainers and, and guys who work out, y'all are really good at figuring out, okay, this is really what you're good at. Let's just hone it. How, what helps you see that in players? Like, is it just a bunch of film or is it like you can see it early? I mean, I can see out? it. I think there's all different trainers. Like, I can see it as soon as, like, I work somebody out. Like, all right, they don't pop the ball. Their feet suck. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Whatever. Yeah. Like, they don't um, – their pickup timing is off. Like, you know, their feet. Like, the first time you worked out with me, like, I don't even know if we dribbled the ball. I think it was – you were like, man, we just got to get up shots. So, mm -hmm. it was, like, a lot of balance stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, trying to be detailed in, like, footwork. And, mm -hmm. like, I watched, you know, film of, like, the Mavs. All right, this is what, mm -hmm. you know – he gets a lot of his stuff off of this mm. is footwork he could use in situations and then yeah. he build it out like that. Um, you know, and then um, I'm a big fan of like, like you saw this summer, like if you get dudes in the gym, work them out and then let them bump. Yeah. <laughs> Cause then you, yeah. Let them bump. And then in, in within that, you can be like, all right, man, Hey man, like we need to work on this. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. you can see it right away. Um, but yeah, I think it's, there's a lot of detail involved. Um, I watch a lot of film. You know, like I, I watch film every morning. A lot of film. Um, you know, like I I love Sacramento, mm -hmm. the way Sacramento plays. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so, like, I'll, I'll dive into different stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it's all about the detail. It's all about knowing every player is going to be different. Every player learns different. That's right? a fact. And then every player, you can, I can teach a skill in a multitude of different ways, right? Mm -hmm. So like some players may want to do it that way, but I can still get the same out of you yeah. with what you may like doing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, People don't understand how hard that is either. It's, it is, but that's the whole thing I think with skill development is it's, there isn't one way to do it. Like mm -hmm. there's not, you know, like everybody in the NBA doesn't run the same offense. No. Like Milwaukee doesn't run the same offense mm -hmm. as Sacramento. Mm. Sacramento is very similar to Golden State because of the personnel, right? Mm -hmm. You got Sabonis, Dream. Like, they run a lot of the same type of stuff with the splits and yeah, the DHOs. Yeah. But, like, you know, Phoenix is different. Dallas Dallas is, is pick and roll, pick and roll, pick and roll, pick and roll, mm -hmm. right? Um, in spacing. Yeah, in space. But, but that, that's the thing that is funny is just, like, you say that, yeah, they're like, oh, it's just a pick and roll. But, like, every spot around them it's just, it's just as important as the guy that's just coming off the pick and roll. And that's what young players don't get. Yeah. That's what yeah. college kids don't get. That's what high school kids don't yeah. get. Is like, yo, you can make a hundred million in the league if you're six, seven, mm -hmm. you shoot it well, mm -hmm. you can play off DHOs, and you can play off lifts if you're a great cutter off the ball yep. and you freaking guard. Yeah. Yep. Right? Facts. So, you know, I think there's a lot of it's, there's so many different things, but there's not one way to do it. I think in skill development, so many people are like, man, this is the way you do it. It's like, there's a different ways you can do it. For sure. And, and there's different ways that are successful for every, every player. Um, and then, yeah, and then the detail involved with skill development, I think, you know, is lost at certain levels. Mm -hmm. What would you, before we go, and because this has been great info and great intel of how you got to where you are today, what is a way that you can advice you would give somebody up and up and coming that how to get started? Cause you got your own gym now. Yeah. You got like how to how to how does someone get to where you are today? Um a lot of work. I think mm -hmm. a lot of like you gotta put your ego aside. Mm -hmm. Um like you gotta take chances, you gotta you gotta study. Um, like a lot of young trainers I see coming up, it's like they try to bash things to make their things work almost. Yeah. And it's like you don't have to like there's no there's so many trainers, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's so many really there's when I started, no it was barely any. Mm -hmm. And now there's like so many. Like if the community can just come together and be like, hey man, that that's really good. It might not be the way I do it, but it could work for you. Yeah. Um, study, study different people. 
it, it's like finding your game. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if you want to play like Michael Jordan, you ain't going to play just like Mike. Yeah. You may model your game after him, mm -hmm. right? Like we do a lot of that with our high school and really good college kids. It's like, all right, who could you be like in the NBA? Yeah. And we, you know, this is what you could do. It's same thing mm -hmm. as training. It's find different things, learn as much as you can, but make sure at the end of the day, you stay authentic. Yeah. Don't be inauthentic. Like there's a lot of just unauthentic, just especially with social media, bro. Yeah. Like some of this shit I'm seeing, I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm like, bro, that's corny. Yeah. Like, I agree. So be authentic, have no ego, mm -hmm. um, and understand like, you, you're, you're only as good as your players are. Like, mm -hmm. I haven't made a basket since I played for them. Yeah. You know, I, I gave you buckets a couple times. But, like, other than oh, that, man, like, God. you know. Here we go. <laughs> this guy here. Uh, I, this guy. <laughs> but. I mean, Dodo got him too. Yeah, Everybody yeah, gets him. Everybody do. They Everybody. all get him. Yeah. Because you catch they just don't count. They just don't count anymore. Yeah. <laughs> That's a fact. But they, they don't get mean him. anything. <laughs> my, hey, it's been an unbelievable pod. My last thing I, I do want to say is, in which I give you major props for, and I've seen you work out younger guys and young people who about to go to college and stuff, and even high level guys. Um, the the explanation and the detail of the game is missing so much mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like there are so many guys that are nice that are not in the league because they don't know the detail part of it and if i can say anything yeah teach people how to play basketball again like just the simple way of playing basketball of spacing if someone else does this what do you do like just little shit like that I like you be just a little shit like okay if someone drives the nail, where do you go? Yeah, you got. You I don't should, just stand there. No, you can forty five it. You can the the corner can ghost cut the corner and then you can pull to the corner like. But I say this, I will say this, like I just did a conference right, mm. and like to me that is missing. Mm -hmm. It the game is. It's a lot of it is like it's too hard. Like sometimes I'm watching. Like I love watching Sacramento because it's all. It's like if you watch them, it's it's pitch, cut, split action, boom. And then, you know, you got De'Aaron Fox, who's, to me, is right up there right now as the top point guard. I mean, he is nasty. And yeah, he got hurt last yesterday. night. but And still had 39. He is him. Yeah. Um, and then you still have opportunities. But, like, some of these teams, man, it's like, like you and me have talked about it. it it's like you, you run all this little bullshit to just get a step up ball screen with 10 seconds left. Yeah. What are you doing off that? Mm -hmm. Like, what are your concepts? What's the ISO concepts? I hate that. Yeah. But I, that because thing? it's funny because me, I, I have this thing. I work smarter, not harder. As I, if I watch film and there's a play that can happen, I can point. I could go like this and point where everybody's about to go and know that action does not mean anything. It's all fluff. Mm -hmm. Just so y'all can I'm like, all right, y'all just chill right here until they get to that ball screen over there. Right. I mean, watch the Mavs play. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But their spacing's phenomenal. Yeah, the space like, is crazy. Like even the spacing, like, and then Ali, I know, but like LeBron last night, he he hit that game tying layup. I don't mm -hmm. know if you watched it, right? But like their spacing was phenomenal. Yeah. Like he's got and he see and it was like you know like if you watch it like he just held the ball for yeah. like ten seconds was like. All right. And Kessler Edwards kept doing this from Vincent in the corner. Yeah. He's just like, dummy. He's like, as soon as you pop back. I'm as gone. soon as you pop back, I'm yeah, gone. I'm good. And then I'm reading the I'm reading the two on one. Yeah. I'm the I'm one. Vincent is two. And I'm just letting you know whatever you want to do, but you have no rim help. So it's night night. It's night night. It's crazy. It's a simple game if you make it. It is. And watch the game. Watch the game. Watch the game and it help out a lot, I promise you. It does. But Ty T. Been amazing, bro. No, I appreciate Great you having I me. I appreciate you coming on. Been very informative, and I, I appreciate everything because this is just another perspective that we can use that help people understand, like, you can still do this at a high level. You can yeah. still be involved with the game. You can still do what you love and be happy. You know what Facts. I'm saying? And that's what it's all about. Facts. But like I said, uh, shout out to Prize Picks. We appreciate everything.
Um, you already know, subscribe on YouTube, um, listen to Apple, Sp- Apple Podcasts and Spotify. I do this every time and it is what it is. But y'all already know. Peace. Thank you.